Dreadgrave's request that we march to his Doom Fortress could only be obeyed creatively at best, since every zombie had to master his own interpretation of walking. We were learning fast, though. I and the other guys fortunate enough to have both legs had almost totally shaken off rigor mortis by the end of the first night, and even the guys with no limbs at all had worked up a decent pace using only their teeth or their buttocks. In the spirit of marching, Dreadgrave's horde lurched, goose-stepped, crawled, shuffled, and chewed its way through Good Soil County. That was what the guy earlier had called the place, and what was written on the older road signs, but the countryside had seen a lot of changes while we'd all been out of touch. The newer signs seemed to believe they were in a place called Grey Doom Valley, which seemed a lot more appropriate. The day was overcast and grim, while the night was just plain cold and dark. It was like a black cloud had descended ground level and refused to move on, squatting in place like a big fat toad. The peasants we passed on our way to the Doom Fortress didn't seem to think there was anything good about the soil either. They came out of their tiny hovels to line the road and gaze at us from under their heavy brows with slack-jawed wonder. They had the skinny builds and pale skin that come from a diet with too much reliance on potatoes and cabbages. All in all, standard local color with low to middling potential for pitchfork and flaming torch-wielding mob forming. I did have a pleasant conversation with one of the shrewder ones who was going down the ranks trying to sell sticky buns. It was from him that I learned that my homeland of Beauregard had been invaded and conquered by the neighboring kingdom of Pillock forty years ago. I wasn't that bothered. I had never been patriotic. Whenever the king's carriage had rattled through my home village during his monthly parades through the land, I had usually joined the other kids to run behind him throwing old peaches. But it did mean that I could estimate how long I had been dead. At the time of my sudden and tragic death, I was fairly certain that the fragile peace between Beauregard and Pillock was about due for another collapse. There was a lot of very old, very stagnant, bad blood between the royal families. Apparently, in their youth, the two kings had been roommates at Rolled Goat University, and there were several outstanding issues regarding eating each other's food and bringing girls around late at night. Anyway, at the time I had died, I had given it ten years at most before another big war. Therefore, I must have been dead for roughly fifty years before Dreadgrave came along and proved my eternal slumber to be nothing of the sort. After four days' march, we came to the top of one last hill, and Dreadgrave's distinctive voice echoed throughout the plains. Behold! he yelled. We laboriously climbed the rise and beheld. We were looking down into a wide valley, and while I had thought the rest of the surrounding country was gloomy, this place made it seem like happy, smiling, bunny rabbit junction. Except for the oily foliage around a small decorative swamp the color of ancient lettuce, there wasn't a scrap of vegetation. The very earth of the valley slopes was gray and cracked, all life drained. A snaking river of unhealthy greenish-brown water bisected the landscape, and a gigantic black cloud hung in the sky, spiraling and swirling madly above the only man-made building in the valley, which squatted over the river like an incontinent titan. Dreadgrave's Doom Fortress looked exactly like Doom Fortresses are supposed to look, a big gnashing skull from the front and a great sprawling insect from above. Veins of obsidian ran across shiny black marble. Black pipes and black chimneys placed randomly around the black roof and walls emitted occasional bursts of decorative black flame. The tallest tower, black, which I took an immediate interest in, was a magnificent hundred-foot affair studded with black stone gargoyles of the kind of terrifying hideousness that has to be especially imported from countries with higher suicide rates. Ooh, went the undead horde. Pretty snazzy. I said aloud to no one in particular as we began to march very carefully down the twisting path into the valley's heart. It is an abomination, said the person walking alongside me. It is an affront before the house of the Lord. I glanced at him and recognized the all too familiar collar. I sighed. No one's forcing you to tag along, you know. Be silent, venomous spittle of the doom serpent, he barked, dodging the issue. You are a servant of evil, an affront to God's will, a corpse reanimated of devilry that man should not wot of. What? Indeed. Hey, you've got just as much, you're just as much an affront to God's will as I am. We've all got the same kind of black magic up our asses. You are wrong. I was returned to life by the blessing of the Lord, for he would have me continue my good work of spreading his name. He stared down at me with both nostrils. You are a demon taking human form, a silver-tongued tempter to draw the righteous from the Lord. Look, I've got nothing against the Lord, I protested. I just didn't see him rushing to intervene when that jerk up ahead started bringing us back to life. You are not worthy of his gift, he barked, a hint of mania dropping into his voice. 
He grabbed my face in one hand and almost knocked me off my feet. Out, demon! Leave me the body of this poor, wretched soul! I shook him off. He was obviously taking an extended holiday from reality, an option that I had to admit I was finding more and more tempting. We had reached the outer wall of the fortress, and the portcullis that f filled the entrance slid upwards like retractable fangs into the gigantic skull-shaped archway. The horde shuffled into the main courtyard, where two little desks were set up. Behind each was one of Dreadgrave's armored human minions, glumly sitting beside stacks of enrollment forms. A third minion, an undead girl who couldn't have been older than twenty when she had died, stood in the middle, earnestly hugging a clipboard to her chest. Dreadgrave nodded to her briefly, then disappeared in the shadows. Okay, exclaimed the girl, her voice loud and high-pitched enough to make the maggots in my eardrums wriggle crinkly. Welcome to Greydoom Valley, and your wonderful new career is one of Lord Dreadgrave's undead minions. My name is Merrill, and I'm the company settlement officer. So if you ever have any problems, or if you just want to chat, my door is always open. Quite a lot of the assembled dead were exchanging confused glances. Now then, most of you will be working as security or maintenance personnel, but we do have some openings in middle and upper management, which we will assign once we've gotten all your names down and worked out your individual qualifications. But don't worry, there's a place at Grey Doom Valley for even the least qualified, least physically intact zombie. A nearby torso gurgled appreciatively from its neck stump. We've got quite a lot of people to process, she continued, so if you could form two orderly queues in front of the desks, we'll have magic users on the left, that's all you mages, priests, conjurers, anyone in the magic industry on the left, and everyone else on the right. If you're not sure where you fit, just go on the right there. The horde began dividing into two grumbling columns. I couldn't help but notice that the priest had joined the queue directly in front of me. I tapped him on the shoulder. Feel free to leave at any time, I whispered. This being a den of Satan's progeny and everything. I will not leave. And why is that? I see now that this is the holy mission with which the Lord has blessed me, he said through his teeth. I am to destroy this den of evil from within. Well, at least give us time to settle down, I said gloomily, losing interest in the conversation. He glared at me for an instant, his lips stretching as far away from his teeth as he could manage. Then he fixed his gaze upon a point somewhere inside his own head and started speaking in dry, croaky tongues. Further interaction was impossible, so I took the opportunity to steal his place in line, and soon enough it was my turn to be interviewed. I stepped forward. Name, said the hairy man behind the desk, who was wearing a very authoritative spiked helmet. Jim, I began, but then my rotten memory banks failed. Jim something. James Smith, wrote the officer aloud. Occupation in life. Magic student? Ah, college boy. Were you thinking of a job as a mercenary or just some support role? Support, I suppose. He nodded. Good. Seems like everyone else in that ceremony was a mercenary. We're up to our eyeballs in the buggers. Must have been a lot of wars around there, I guess. What we really need is a cook. All the human guards have been eating tin beans for months. You know anything about cooking? I used to tin bar part-time, I tried. He crossed something out on my form, and I felt a little disheartened. Any idea how advanced a magic student? Not very. Firebolts, that's about it. Well, there's nothing quite like on-the-job experience for a young corpse's education. You're on the security team. That basically means you hang around the fortress and kill adventurers. Just adventurers? He didn't look up as he wrote. Anything that doesn't work here, but it's mostly adventurers, yeah. I glanced around at the crowded courtyard. Do you really need this many zombies just for adventurers? This time, he did look up. His helmet made it hard to tell, but I think he was giving me a very funny look. Call it erring on the side of caution, he said with loud sarcasm. Anyway, it's easy work. I'm sure you'll pick it up quickly. Now I just have to ask a few personal questions for our equal opportunity policy country of origin? Beauregard, I said. New Pillock, he wrote. Ooh, you're Beauregardian too? said Merrill, the company settlement officer, who was floating around in an uncertain supervisory sort of way. I'm Beauregardian. Did you die in the Pillock Wars? Er, uh, no. Before then, I think. College rivalry thing. She was suddenly very interested. A pre-integration Beauregardian? Both your parents too? Yeah, tenth generation, I said guardedly, wondering what she was getting at. My family didn't get around very much. Her eyes were shining, or rather, 
They were, while they were still glowing with the sickly yellow light of necromantic magic like everyone else's, she was now gazing at me like a starving man gazes at a grilled cheese sandwich. She laid a hand on the officer's shoulder and glanced at my application. Security? Great. Put him on my detail. I really look forward to working with you, Mr. Smith. She scampered off about her business, leaving me and the officer baffled. What was that all about? He asked, like I would know. <coughs> Went the incredibly long cue behind me. Oh, right. Let's keep this moving. He pointed to a nearby archway leading into the fortress. You're in the main tower. That's the third turning on the right. Keep heading upstairs until you find a free bunk. Welcome aboard. Look forward to working with you, etc., etc. Now 